when you think about how many days of golf he's played since he left office, maybe he could have skipped a couple of rounds of golf and gone through the boxes to respond to a subpoena from a grand jury. Welcome back to America Decides. That was former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie continuing his criticism of Donald Trump. Unlike the majority of the 2024 field, Christie says the former president has only one person to blame for his legal woes. The problem for Donald Trump and all of this is his own conduct. He's his own worst enemy. None of this would have happened to him or to the country if he had just returned the documents. Ashley Etienne and Doug High join us now. Ashley is a CBS News political contributor and former communications director for Vice President Harris and Speaker Pelosi. Doug is a Republican strategist and the former communications director for the RNC. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So, Doug, I want to start with you, because obviously we know we've been talking about how Donald Trump is still very popular. Mm -hmm. So what is Chris Christie doing here? Is he is it enough to make the case that, you know, he's willing to stand up against Trump? Is that a winning argument? Well, it may not be a winning argument for Chris Christie, but it, it's part of an argument that he sees as necessary for how the Republican Party can function moving forward. Um, we see, obviously, Donald Trump is leading in the polls. We've seen a little bit of a pullback on that based on uh, the indictment. And what Christie refers to is what we sort of obviously see so often about Trump being his own worst enemy, not just in his conduct, but the Brett Baer interview where he uh, just gave evidence after evidence to prosecutors of here's more ways you could find him guilty if you didn't think that you had enough. And so what we see is this, this nomination isn't going to go around Donald Trump. It's going to go through him. So you've got to take Trump on directly. Christie's the only one who's really doing it this, at this point. As we see Trump drop in the polls a little bit, we might see more Republicans standing up a little bit more to Trump. They're, they've tried to avoid him thus far. Long term, that's not possible. Um, I'm glad you brought up that interview because I want to play a clip from uh, the former president's interview with, with Brett Baer last night. In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. Why did you hire all of them in the first place? Because I hired 10 to 1 that were fantastic. Um, so we play this because, you know, I covered Trump, and I know that he has a hard time, shall we say, um, acknowledging blame for any of his actions, including this classified documents case, which the trial is set to begin in August. So do you think that his lack of accountability will hurt him, or is this just playing into what his base wants to hear? Well, that's, that's really where the party, uh, we see the divisions. You know, Trump is leading, obviously, in every poll, and a lot of that support is unshakable. But he's not necessarily at 60 percent or 70 percent. And so where we see that Trump is in a dominant position or people say he's in a dominant position, he's winning and he's winning more than a plurality. He's got a majority right now. But that seems to be shrinking a little bit. And it's why other Republicans are, are trying to step up and take him on directly or indirectly. Trump keeps giving them the opportunity to do so because we're not going to be able to win as Republicans with just the Trump base. Those people who voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and Joe Biden in 2020, they're not coming back. And that's Arizona, that's Georgia, that's potentially North Carolina as well. That meth gets very difficult if Donald Trump is our nominee. Uh, and Ashley, I want to turn to Hunter Biden because today Republicans. No about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Republicans I got spent, something to say well, about Trump. <laughs> Republicans spent a lot of time comparing the Trump case to the Hunter Biden case, saying that very, you know, very different cases. It's a sweetheart Absolutely. deal. Absolutely. One does not involve President Biden, and one involves an, an independent. Uh, citizen Hunter Biden. Here's the thing, though, about Hunter Biden. I'll say the same thing that I, about Hunter that, that I say about Trump, which is no one's above the law. You know, the the Department of, of Justice investigated this for five years. A Trump appointed U.S. attorney investigated this for five years. Joe Biden did not shut down the investigation. He didn't get any credit. Can you imagine Donald Trump pursuing his own son and using the Department of Justice to investigate his own son? Absolutely not. So Joe Biden believes no one's above the law. His son admitted, admitted guilt. They found two charges, tax uh, evasion as well as gun charges. 
but it falls very short of what the GOP promised. You know, they were talking about there's this international scheme to bribe a foreign uh, dignitaries and embassy, you know, in uh, in Ukraine, and and they've not found evidence to to match that. And so that's the problem. So for me, it calls into question whether or not the House uh, Oversight Committee should continue their investigation. It was Comer who actually the chairman who said about the Mueller investigation, if Mueller and the force of DOJ can't find evidence on Trump to connect the Russia investigation to him, then the, the Oversight Committee needs to walk away. So that's got to be the case now. If DOJ couldn't find it, and guess what? No one wanted to find dirt on Donald Trump more than, I mean, on Joe Biden more than Donald Trump. You know that, you you follow Donald Trump. And if DOJ couldn't find it under Trump, then it's likely not there. So the committee, to me, has to walk away. And it raises questions. How much more uh, taxpayer money are we going to put behind these allegations? The GOP, as Dan said, the GOP and Dan and I were on the impeachment um, uh, committee together. Uh, and to Dan's point, the GOP have this pattern of putting the conclusion of investigation ahead of the evidence. They can make a conclusion and then they go out in search of the evidence. The evidence isn't here. What we found was taxes and gun charges, and he's admitted to them, and now he's taking responsibility for it. Well, that is the exact point that Congressman Goldman tried to make, but for now, the investigation continues. So thank you both for joining us. I wish we could talk to you for much, much longer, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank Thank you. you. All right.